Hello, Modern here. In today's video, I want to show you my early Chef Mike Navigator build for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. This one utilizes wavelengths between 1000 and 300k MHz to cook brains to absolute perfection. This build also focuses on the power of the Navigator with minor dips into the actual abilities featured by the Officer and Master Tactician. The strength here lies in the immense burst potential as well as strong innate abilities of the mutant archetype giving you access to incredible wide range AOE capabilities, similar to a broiler creating a crispy outside, and wavelengths targeting specific regions of the brains, overcooking certain parts. Now, Rogue Trader likes to swarm you with enemies, making AOE the best option to deal with threats. This is taken care of very well with multiple abilities provided by the navigator, based on 9 of sight. However, that's not all there is to this class. We are also having access to strong CC and single target damage, without ever scratching the veil, which we can also restore with another set of abilities. Psychers have little to fear with their navigator on their side. Chef Mike got you. The officer class additionally provides your party with extra turns, further boosting the performance of your entourage. Later on you will get access to even more tools and equipment letting you access even higher ward settings to really get the job done. With that in mind, let's go over the build. Now first let's have a look at the characteristics. We are going to solely focus on willpower, fellowship and perception. Those three stats are all we need. The navigator skills allow us to substitute toughness, agility, strength with all of our willpower. This provides us with a high dot chance and a very high health pool. As for other skills, we want to increase our knowledge in the Imperium, increase our ability to commerce and increase our awareness by a tiny amount. Due to the origin of this one, Cassia, we get the Lidless Stare ability right from the get-go. This ability is a huge cone-like AoE in front of us. This ability has unlimited range. This means everything we see will get dealt the damage. And if they do not pass the willpower resistance test, they will be stunned. One of the strongest abilities in the entire game. And like I said, you get this one for free. For the archetype, we have the Voidborn and the Navigator Origin, both of which will increase our willpower considerably. For the starting class, we're going to pick up the Officer. The Officer starts with the Voice of Command, which is a straight up buff for our allies. We then increase our Persuasion and get Bring It Down. This ability grants a targeted ally an extra turn with two action points. This is incredible value on a caster or someone that's near the target of Cassia. But with this one, we target, for example, our sniper and can shoot again. So our sniper can shoot two times, which is really, really strong. And if an enemy is killed, while Bring It Down is active, we get additional momentum, which we can use for, for example, Finest Hour. This one, again, is the ultimate. So when we reach a certain point in the fight, based on the momentum we have, we can grant an ally an extra turn with full AP and MP and there is no attack limit. Cassia sadly does not get an additional talent here, so this one is grayed out. So we're going to move on to the next one. For this one I highly recommend going with the willpower, but Cassia starts with fellowship. Not that bad, we're going to use that anyway. Then we pick up the first ability, which is going to be a strict navigator diet. Ebb and flow is the first one. Every even turn we get an additional action point and every odd turn we get 20 perception, an incredibly strong buff, especially early. Next, we use the stable roots. So when the navigator uses a navigator ability, the veil degradation reduces by one. Because we're spamming navigator abilities with Cassia, we can use our psych abilities without much thought because we always repair the veil. Then we pick up willpower and the strongest damaging ability throughout the whole early and mid game, which is called held in my gaze. Now, held in my gaze, deals damage based on your willpower, and if an enemy does not pass the willpower resistance test, they become immobilized. They're basically stuck in a place. So if you're using this one on a boss, you can use this one up to three times in a combat. So you have your held in my gaze, then you use a staff, for example, the Bloodhound staff, which now adds additional damage, but you can use the cast again. Then we can use bring it down, and this will reset our attack timer so we can use held the gaze again. So we have three attacks with this Cassia. This is how this one basically works. I am not entirely sure if this one is a bug, so maybe it is, so you can only use this one two times if they fix it, but if not, you can attack three times, which is really, really strong for one AP. 16 cell radius, so an incredible ranged ability, but you need to see the target. Next, we pick up Strange Vitality. Our bonus wound, so our health, so that's this one, 78, is now healed 
every single time we begin our turn by the willpower bonus. So the character bonus is nine. You're going to heal every single turn by nine. And because of all the navigator talents we have here, we're getting additional heal. So at the end of the day, you will find around 20 health to be restored every single round for free. And if we kill enemies, which is very easy, we heal even more. So Cassia is basically a one-man army. We deal incredible burst damage, have a lot of health, a lot of dodge, a lot of AoE damage. We can CC enemies. She's a powerhouse. So next we are picking Mind Over Matter. Now all our resistance tests are based on our willpower. So if you had a strength check, you're now rolling your willpower. Because our willpower is so high, we basically always succeed. And our health is now also calculated based on our willpower, not on our toughness. With this talent, we go from like 30 health, 40 health to 80 health. It's a really strong talent. Next, we pick up Persuasion and we pick up Finest Hour, Upgrade 2. All negative effects are removed and the target cannot die until the officer's next turn. Then we pick up Commerce, again Willpower, Threads of Fault. So if an enemy fails in a resistance test, they now get debuffed. Attacks against them now have a higher chance to be a crit. This one is 20 plus 2 times our perception bonus. But because our perception bonus is quite high, so 6, we get a 32% increased critical strike chance with just this ability. We pick up perception with this one and then we pick immolate soul. So for 2 AP, we now gaze into a line. So it's a straight line ability and all enemies that are visible and hit by this one, which is a guaranteed hit by the way, receive quite a lot of damage. Up to 10 plus 4 times 9, so it's up to 46 damage and they are inflicted with soul burn. Soul Burn is a really strong status effect. Basically a burn, but if we burn a Psyka, they suffer additional damage. Same with demons. So using this ability versus demons is very, very effective. Next, we pick up Master of Time. So whenever a creature gains an extra turn, the Navigator gets a plus 5 willpower bonus until the end of combat. So whenever we use Bring It Down or Finest Hour, we buff our willpower even more. So we get more powerful the longer we fight. And then we pick up Pass Unscathed. So if our perception is higher than our agility, our dodge is based on that. So we don't need to invest agility to increase our dodge chance because we have our perception modifier here. That's 30% base chance plus 60% of our perception here. Next, we pick up Comoros and again, perception. And lastly, tonicity. The navigator deals additional damage every five characteristic bonus of the currently equipped staff. So when we look at our staff, we have plus 10 willpower and plus five perception that's free additional damage and for our last ability it's the next finest hour upgrade it's the fourth one any kill during the extra turn restores a uh, one ap and one mp for the target which is based on our fell bonus which is currently five so we can restore for five kills five ap and five mp and you can direct this ability to another target so if you do not have any enemies around you you can direct those ap and mp to another target and then use the rest with another ally it's a really, really strong ability. For the second class, we're going with the Master Tactician. The Master Tactician gets basically momentum additionally, as well as additional crit damage with every stack of the Tactical Advantage. We acquire Tactical Advantage stacks per five momentum gained by the Master Tactician or by allies. And we also have some Tactical Advantage already based on our Fell Bonus. We get five advantage already, so we can use this one for free to buff our damage on our next stack by 20%. For the next ability, we pick up Glimpse of Fate. This has the reason that we need to unlock the Mend Reality ability later down the line. This one is basically a hit chance buff that's based on five times the willpower bonus of the Navigator. That's around 55% currently. So if you know you cannot hit a target, for example, with a Ballistic Shot of your Devastator, you use this one and then you hit, guaranteed, or with your Sniper. We pick up Joint Offensive. For every enemy hit by a Master Tactician attack, the Master Tactician gains one stack of Tactical Advantage. So when we deal an AoE hit, we get a lot of Tactical Advantage. We can then use that to boost our next damage. Orchestrated Firestorm. This one is basically useless for our purposes because we have the extra turn. At 20, we get an additional AP. We boost our Willpower even further. Again, we boost our Willpower. Next, we pick up in the hero's footsteps. So whenever someone uses their hero ability, so their heroic act, like for example, Daring Breach from the Devastator, we now get an extra turn based on our fell bonus in AP and full MP. So you can dish out a lot more damage with this one. And lastly, we pick up Mend Reality. We have a bonus of 9 willpower. 
This means we can repair the veil by nine willpower points every time we use this ability. So our psychers can go wild. The veil will never degrade. This single class prevents that from happening. Remember, every single action we take and demand reality all help in repairing the veil. And because of this ability, when we use that, all our psychers, all our allies get a willpower bonus deflection against warp damage. So nine flat damage of warp damage is then gone and from psychic powers. So some psychic powers have guaranteed hits. So if one deals 10 damage and 14 damage to you, you can use this ability to make that one and five. It is incredibly valuable, especially in the mid game where a lot of Nurgle casters are coming up. They have double attacks with 10, 20 damage. With this one, we can prevent that from happening. For additional talents, we're going to pick personal involvement. It's going to boost our resolve every time we kill something. Then we're going to pick stuff like ally coordination. So sometimes you are going to find yourself surrounded by enemies and you want to use this grenade. But with this one, we deal less damage, have a higher dot chance, and it's just much less likely to hit our allies and damage them. Then we have heroic inspiration, the first ability of the master tactician. After the first heroic act is used in combat, cost zero action points. A really strong one is CC. This one grants one wound, so one health, to every ally for every stack of master tactician's tactical advantage that is provided by them to us. This one doesn't sound like much, but it's really, really strong. Then we have Dawn of Victory, every crit scored by us. So if we deal AOE damage and all of those crit, we get momentum. We can use momentum to use our heroic deeds, which is just incredible. You will also find yourself with another ability. For this ability, we're going to pick up Strong Point, which is a temporary health heal based on the tactical advantage we have. So the more tactical advantage we have, the better we heal with this ability. It is crucial to have someone that can heal. Like I said, it's temporary wounds. Those are a different kind of health bar. It's the blue one. So you have green that is healed by specific med kits and something like that. And temporary wounds that are on top, see it like a barrier. So you can get more temporary wounds than your regular wounds. And they stack on top of each other. So you have multiple sources of them. You will be still wounded after the fight. So you need to use a med kit, but this one helps greatly during high damage fights. And lastly, the exemplar. The exemplar has some really neat abilities. However, that's the end end game. And this one is just more power. As for the equipment, I highly recommend the Bloodhound Staff giving us another damaging ability per round. That's just five to six damage dealt to Cassia, we can heal this one very easily. For the second staff, Staff of the Cassini, this one buffs our allies by a little bit. But mainly we are going to use the Staff of the Bloodhound. For this character, we are also going to focus on Law Imperium. So when you find Tedora's Rosary, that's Law to Imperium, you can also find the Imperial Scroll for additional Law. You can find stuff like Aquila's Pendant for additional willpower. 10 is a lot. The Pioneer's Bracers we can find very early on in the game. So whenever we deal damage, the target's weapon skill and ballistic skill is debuffed. Stacks up to three times, so we can debuff them by 15. That's quite a lot. The Noble Bomb Mantle is quite good if we are isolated. Four cell radius is quite a lot. So if you find something that's more defensive or offensive for this character, pick that. Then we have the Expeditory Footwear. Whenever the Navigator uses a power, we get additional dodge. This one stacks, so we get more and more dodge the more we use our abilities. Then we have the Ancient Terror Monocle. Here for this one, this one changes the Law Imperium test from Intelligence to Fellowship. We're going to use Light Armor to not neglect our dot chance. We have a 45% chance to not receive any damage. And consumables we basically never use, but you can stack some grenades. Now this sums up the build guide. If you like this one, please leave a like. Comment if you have any questions. I will try to answer every single one of them. Subscribe if you haven't already. Join your channel membership or leave a donation if you have the spare coin. And see you in my next guide. Bye.